Uh, thank you. So, yeah, my name is Takwanisa, and I'm going to present this paper by Shifa and colleagues. So I'm here just presenting on, the, on their behalf. Okay. Um, okay. Like the pre previous presenters, we, we are comparing our country, individual country, uh, story about inequality to the WID uh, uh, companion database and how the two, uh, uh, how they compare. So the outline of the presentation is, yeah, uh, just like previous presenters, we're starting with providing an, an introduction and uh, highlighting the objectives and then we tell this inequality story uh, about South Africa yeah, in, in our case and then we compare that to the WIT database and um, then uh, conclude uh, on the comparison. So, as been highlighted before, the main problem is it is uh, a challenge to compare existing uh, like several surveys from even from the same country, even surveys that fall in the same series. So this again is the same problem for South Africa as well. So the objective of this um, uh, exercise is to explore in detail the methodological challenges uh, that are found in the household surveys, uh, the various household surveys uh, from South Africa. And in this case, we are focusing on surveys from 1993 where the first representative uh, household survey was conducted, the PSLSD that you see uh, presented in sections to come. Uh, <coughs> so we're using micro data to examine uh, mostly income inequality. Then we compare uh, these estimates with the weight companion uh, estimates as well. So uh, what do we know about inequality uh, in general in this, by way of background, uh, if we look at the graph to the left, showing um, the, the distribution of inequality across uh, several countries. As you can see, the, uh, the countries highlighted in there shows that uh, most country, uh, inequality is high among countries in the sub-Saharan Africa, and South Africa is topping uh, that list. But when we compare uh, inequality of uh, access to resources, uh, we see a different story where other countries emerge, like Mozambique and Niger, they have high inequality to access to resources when you compare South Africa, which is on the, on the lower end in that comparison. So different inequality measures, uh, they tell a different story. Then this is, these are some results from uh, some existing work that we're doing within ASA, uh, showing inequality here from this in income inequality from 2006 to uh, 2015. And we see, we can observe a, a certain drop in the inequality from 2006 to 2009. Um, and it becomes stable. But when we compare the expenditure shared decimals, for, for the same years, it's looking at 2006 and 2015, we see they, they follow the, the, the same distribution. So for this particular case, uh, uh, they say it is difficult to tell what is causing this sudden drop in inequality when, when you compare with other measures. Uh, we also, they also look at uh, access measures of access to basic services um, so in this case they are saying in other than water you see electricity um, improved sanitation and internet there is a catch up over time uh, these are comparing differentials between rural and urban and over time they are all catching up uh, kind of highlighting that they, there is a reduction in equality even by rural urban differentials Um, so in this table, they show some of the data sets that were, were used uh, in the weed to, to extract in, in, uh, inequality uh, estimates from the weed. Uh, but in their case, they started from 1993, where they believe the data sets are, rep are nationally representative. And as well, uh, when you compare to other data sets that, or estimates that were used in the weed that starts from the 1960s. Okay. So in this case, they show some, yeah, some data sets, for example, uh, 
some data sets that were not included in the weed, but they can also allow you to, to estimate inequality. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, if I need to highlight anything, I hope to remember that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, this is the, the narrative from the weed estimates. Uh, where the data sources are the PSLSD from 1993 and the 1996 census, 2000 uh, IES, the Income and Expenditure Survey, the 2001 census, and again the IES in 2005, and then we have the National Income Dynamic Study estimates from 2008 to uh, 2017. Uh, basically, what they are showing that... Okay, so... From, from this narrative, uh, basically they're showing the same pattern, right? But in their case in, 19, in 1996, they used a, a another survey. But one of the issues they highlighted is in 2000, they're using the IES as well as in 2000, as well as in 2000 and, uh, 2005, right? And the results show that even inequality using the same series of uh, surveys, the inequality uh, increased uh, between the, uh, over that period. But whilst you're looking at it in general, they have the same pattern, they follow the same pattern. So when you look at the full distribution or the full estimates from the CGS teasers uh, used in the weed companion, uh, it, is, it is difficult to believe like this trend that is decreasing from the 1960s up to 1990s, then it start increasing. So, which is the reason why they choose starting from 1993 uh, using the PS, PLSD uh, survey. Okay. So here, we're comparing two sets of uh, results, the needs uh, estimates and PLSD uh, results. Uh, in this case, there are surveys where the instrument are sort of comparable. So the needs and the PLSD uh, uh, instrument is comparable. And then the IES and the LCS as well is comparable. Uh, these are estimates from, Jenny estimates from income, and when you compare the pattern against expenditure, uh, where we observe uh, roughly from 93. Uh, when you're looking at income inequality, a, a general decline from 68.8 to 66.3. And again, other than the, AI, the, the 1995 one, we kind of have the same story where income inequality is also falling uh, over time. Okay. Then in this case, uh, this is comparing the the weed uh, standardized uh, Gini coefficients and the weed uh, original, these are the Gini coefficients that were extracted from previous surveys. And then the gray one is showing the ASA estimates. These are estimates uh, that were completed by the ASA team for the South African case. Um, so just to highlight that the difference between these two is that they compared two years where, for example, you have the same estimate, you have estimates of the genie, and if they overlap and there's a difference, then they will lift the other one so that it's comparable over time. Okay, so other than this, in this case, they use the 1990, uh, the, the weed uses the, the 1996 census, but in this case, they, 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 they removed the 1996 census and uh, used one of the surveys. Uh, now I, I can't remember the exact survey. But other than this part where they compare the PSLSD, uh, and over, as you go forward, you see that the, the, the estimates are comparable. But the reason is that they are using the preferred weed estimates of net income per capita when you compare uh, in, in that period. Okay, so yeah, in conclusion, I, as highlighted before, um, the weed database is very helpful. Uh, what we know about South Africa is that inequality is, has remained high. Uh, even, um, yes, with different, with variations in, in year to year comparison. But 
some of these uh, differences are due to met methodological uh, differences that were implemented across different surveys over time, like instruments change to improve them, and when you compare, uh, the, the patterns are not comparable over time. So in conclusion as well, they said, it is not yet clear what causes this year-to-year -year variations as more research is needed to investigate uh, uh, these differences. And yeah, we, they cannot con draw like a conclusion ab about how the narrative from weed compares to each of the country um, estimates uh, as the adjustment done uh, sometimes uh, some of it, it raised some of the estimates way higher than what is computed from some of the uh, country estimates when you compare other different surveys. Thank you.